the book of Joshua, session 28. And I really want to move on, um, but I, I cannot leave the captain of the army of God. Um, I just want to not run through all the Bible verses, but actually give them to you so you can quickly jot them down for yourself. And why don't you take your own time, maybe even the Sabbath that's coming, and just go and study all these verses and, and find out what what is God's will? Why is this captain, why is Yahuwah Tsefaot, the Lord of hosts, the the commander of the heavenly host, why is he so important? How is he the will of God, the word of God being forced onto this world? Because either we allow his will to force our will according to his will, or when he, according to his will, or when he comes, he will force us down with the rest of this world. He is a commander. He is a captain. He has a sword in his hand. And if we are here at the edge of the Jordan, willing to submit under the authority of this high commander, then he is the one whose will has to be done. We want to go out and start fighting with our own swords, but he says no. <laughs> You are actually not going to win Babylon with your sword. You are going to win Babylon. You are going to overthrow Jericho in silent submission. And that is why we learned yesterday that Joshua bows down, becomes silent, take off his shoes, rest, find your rest in God. And he empowers you for the as he want. Oh, he's so much more and so much deeper. I'll give you the verses and you will study yourself, even with your family. And discover the deep mysteries of the Torah of Yahuwah that has become flesh since the beginning of the world and has always been trying to show and teach and guide and draw all of us into God's will. Because inside his will, although this world is in the will of the enemy, inside God's will, within the midst of a lost world, we will find that peace. And even if we die, even if we give up our lives, our self-lives, that's why Paul says, die to yourself daily, we find in that the self daily we find in that the overcoming of the flesh, the overcoming of the serpent, of the, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the overcoming of finally this temporary life we have so that it can be exchanged for the eternal, for the immortal, for the walking with God in the evening breeze of the Garden of Eden. Let your will be done, even though I'm afraid, here on the brink of the Jordan, not my will, because Father, my self-will, what I think and do and want, is not going to bring us the kingdom. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. My will for my journey is not necessarily what you have in mind. Your will will let your kingdom come. Come, yes. But our will for the journey is not the same as yours. And therefore, you have to allow us to die to our own will and accept yours. You have to teach us to lay down our own will and accept yours. Because this captain of your army brings your will. He's not working for us. He's not working for the enemy. He's, he's not for us or for them. He is for you. We say you are our God. You don't belong to us. You are the God. And your commander of the heavenly host is your commander whom you send. We can be privileged and thankful that you have sent him to us. But we need to obey and follow and understand 
your will and understand your will is always best. No matter how we think, how we feel, where our emotions are leading us. We have to learn, Father, through this journey. Teach us not to bend our will, but to break our will so that we can lay it down at your feet and you can raise us up into the army of Ezekiel 37. Our world just brought us a valley of dry bones and death and destruction. This world religious, educational, social, governmental system rooted in Babylon, rooted in the true tree of knowledge, is just bringing death and destruction. It's only through your will that, that anything will ever change. Pesach happened in, uh, in Exodus and then there was... And it's the same. You are teaching us your will. Here by the, by the edge of the Jordan, the crossing over the Jordan, and then we keep Pesach just before we enter the promised land. Your will is revealed by your word, by your, by your prophets. And that is why the saints in the end days will be those who keep your law and understand the prophecies. Because Revelation 13 no, no, no. Revelation 19 verse 10 says that we must worship Yahuwah for the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. So to, um, lots of people say the spirit is teaching me this and this and this. If the spirit that is teaching you the prophecy is not the testimony of the Torah that became flesh, I want to tell you, be careful of that spirit, spirit, because this captain, this war hero, this commander, he is called Yahuwah Tsefaot, the Lord of hosts. He is the one about whom Moses and the prophets testify all over Old and New Testament. And that testimony is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy is the testimony of Yahshua, Yahuwah, our Savior. And if we don't follow the leading of the breath of God to understand these prophecies and these testimonies, how on earth can we fight alongside this commander? We will either, either run back to Egypt or die in the wilderness or join Jericho. Or we'll become depressed. Like, or we'll become depressed like Elijah and want to just die in the caves. But this captain is pulling us out of the caves at this moment and getting us ready to take back the, the covenant of the promised land. So, okay, if you're ready, just if you can have your pen and paper ready, I just want to give you all these verses. Um, I have to move on with Joshua. And if we're going to study these verses together, it's going to be another, I don't know, two or three or four sessions. So you're going to have to study this on your own. We, we want to understand who this captain is because we want to go back to the promised land. We want to live in the kingdom of God. So here before Jericho, we are scared. And then Joshua 5 verse 13 to 15, we meet this commander. And he teaches us that he's the same one that spoke to Moses in the burning bush. 20 to 22. Exodus 23 verse 20 to 22. Um, talking about an angel. This angel of God that we have to obey. He is the one that will keep us. An angel can't keep us. It's only God that can keep us and save us and, and um, protect us. But he gives us his angel, his commander, his word that traveled with us and he kept us. Exodus 3 verse 2 talks about the same angel that appeared and said, take off your shoes. The same as the commander in Joshua 5. Who is this amazing captain? He's the Lord of hosts. He's the word of God. He's a judge. He's not an angel, but he's called the angel of God all over the Old Testament. This being 
as we go through these verses, we'll see that he is equal to God. So let's look at the first one. Who is this amazing captain? He's called the Lord of hosts, the captain of the heavenly army. Write down Psalm 103, verse 19 to 21. Luke 2, verse 13. Psalm 103, verse 19 to 21. Luke 2, verse 13. 2 Kings 6, verse 16 to 17. 2 Kings 6, verse 16 to 17. Revelation 19, verse 14. Revelation 19, verse 14. Host of heaven is angels of heaven, is army of heaven. Number two, who is this amazing captain? He's the word of God. He's got a sword in his hand, the word, Ephesians 6. Go and read the whole Ephesians 6 again, together with Revelation 19, verse 13. The word of God is Yeshua, Revelation 19, verse 13. The word of God is Yeshua, John 1, verse 1, as well as the first apostle of John 1, verse 1. So the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1, and the first letter of John, 1 John 1, verse 1. And this word was from the beginning, Zechariah 7, verse 1, Revelation 19, verse 11 to 14. Remember, if you can't keep up, just pause, write down the verse, and then listen further. Zechariah 7, verse 4. Zechariah 8, verse 1 to 9. John 1, verse 14. Number 3. Who's this captain? He's a judge. This sword, the word, will destroy Jericho. Not we. This judge will come back. This captain will destroy Jericho. Isaiah 5, verse 24. Revelation 19, verse 15. Psalm 2, verse 6 to 9. Psalm 2, verse 6 to 9. Isaiah 9, verse 7. Isaiah 9, verse 7. Isaiah 49, verse 26. Numbers 24. Verse 17. Number 4. This is not an angel. He looks like an angel. He's maybe called an angel. But this being is something else. He is someone else than a normal angel. Revelation 19, verse 10. Revelation 22, verse 8 to 9. Hebrews 1. Judges 13, verse 16, 17, 18, 19, and 22. Judges 13, from verse 16 to 19, and verse 22. Exodus 23, verse 2. Exodus 23, verse 20. Exodus 3, verse 2. And of course, Joshua 5, verse 14. Together with Judges 13, verse 16 to 22, also read Revelation um, 3, verse 12, and Hebrews 1, verse 4. Number 5. This being, um, he acts and he speaks he is God. He is equal to God. No man has seen God. So who did Moses see? Who did Joshua worship? Exodus 33 verse 20. 1 Timothy 6 verse 16. 1 Timothy 6 verse 16. John 3 verse 13. I'm sorry. <coughs> John 3 Verse 13, John 1, verse 18, John 6, verse 46, John 3, verse 13, John 1, verse 18, John 6, verse 36, 1 John 4, verse 12, the first part of verse 12, 1 John 4, verse 12. 
um, this being is, um, this being is um, equal to God. He is something different than just, uh, just a captain, just an angel, just a messenger. Philippians 2 verse 6. John 14 verse 8. Colossians 1 verse 15. Hebrews 1 verse 3. Read that, Hebrews 1 verse 3, in conjunct conjunction with Matthew 11 verse 27. And again, Psalm 2 verse 2. Psalm 2, guys, is is such an end-time encouragement for you. So it's Philippians 2 verse 6, John 1 verse 1, John 14 verse 8, Colossians 1 verse 15, Hebrews 1 verse 3, together with Matthew 11 verse 27, and Psalm 2 verse 2. How is this angel or this messenger equal to God? Matthew 1 verse 23, Isaiah 9 verse 6, Isaiah 9 verse 6, Zechariah 14 verse 9, Zechariah 14 verse 9, Isaiah 37 verse 16, Isaiah 44 verse 6, Yahuwah is the King of Israel, Yeshua is the Lord of hosts. In this one verse, let's just read maybe this one verse together. And I thank Yahuwah because nobody taught me this, nobody showed me. I learned about the Lord of hosts, Yeshua is the captain of the army, through many various teachers, but I could never find a verse that showed me how he is really equal to God. And as I was doing Bible studies one day, I was reading and, and, I, and I read Isaiah 44 verse 6 and I, and I said, Father, oh, finally, I have my proof out of your law and prophets, out of your testimony, out of your scriptures, that the Lord of hosts, Yahuwah Tsefaot, is one with Yahuwah. But Yahuwah Tsefaot is not only just Yahuwah, because you say, you call him something next to you. You, you talk about there is no other God but you. And then you say, Isaiah 44 verse 6. Thus says Adonai, Israel's king and his redeemer. Adonai Tsefaot. I am the first and the last and there is no God me. Now, read this carefully. Thus says Adonai, Israel's king and his redeemer, Adonai Tsefaot. And of course, a lot of people are going to say, this is only God that says, he is Israel's king, and he is Israel's redeemer. But he calls himself two names here. He says, I'm Adonai, I am master, I am your master, Adon. I am Adonai, Israel's king, and I am Adonai Tsefaot, your redeemer. I'm your king and I'm your redeemer. Yes, Yahuwah is both. But he says, and his redeemer. Thus says Adonai, Israel's king. And thus says his redeemer. His, who? Adonai, Israel's king. He has a redeemer. His redeemer is called what? Look carefully at this word, uh, at this verse. Look carefully at this word, uh, at this verse. Adonai, Yahuwah, Israel's king has a redeemer that is called Adonai Tsefaot. Yahuwah has a redeemer and he's called Yahuwah Tsefaot. And Yahuwah Tsefaot is the God of the hosts. Adonai Tsefaot is the Lord of the heavenly host. Tsefaot is the, is the army. And this says Adonai Israel's king. And his Redeemer, Adonai Tsefaot, says the same thing. It's like they both say, I am the first and the last. And there is no God beside me. And to try and get into all these 
um, messianic arguments about whether Jesus is not We do accept that our 2.5 kilogram brain cannot understand how Yahshua is a chat with Yahuwah. And yet Yahshua on earth prays to Yahuwah. And yet they are one. They've been speaking since Genesis 1 out of one mouth, with one voice, with one ruach. They are one. If you saw me, you have seen the Father. And so there are many, many other verses. Okay, so Isaiah 44 verse 6 talks about this God and his Redeemer, whom he calls Adonai Tzephot. And this takes us back to John 14 verse 23. All right, so number six, this, um, this captain of the hosts, this angel, this messenger that is Ikaot, he is the king of glory. He is the, the coming king. He is the king that came in the name of Yahuwah. Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. Ezekiel 9, verse 9. Luke 19, verse 35, 37 and 38. Luke 19, verse 35, 37, 38. Micah 5, verse 1 and 2. John 1, verse 49. And John 12, verse 13. And now to sum up, we've, we've mentioned these six things. Who's this amazing captain? He's the Lord of the heavenly army. There is a heavenly host. Number two, he's the word of God. Number three, he's the Lord of the heavenly army. There is a heavenly host. Number two, he's the word of God. Number three, he's a judge. Number four, he's not an angel. Number five, he's equal to God. Number six, he's king. And as a summary, from... Number one to number six, take down the following verses. John 6, verse 44. Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be, so shall my angel be, so shall my captain be, so shall my king be. John 6, verse 44, Isaiah 55, verse 11. This is the mystery of this Redeemer of God, who is called Yahuwah Tzephaut. Isaiah 11, verse 33. Romans 16, verse 25. 1 Corinthians 7. I'm lying. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. Ephesians 3, verse 4 and 9. Ephesians 5, verse 32. This Messiah Ephesians 5 verse 32, this Messiah, this church is hidden in mystery in the Old Testament. Ephesians 6 verse 19. And lastly, Colossians 1 verse 26 to 27. And Colossians 1 verse 27 takes us all the way back to Joshua 5 verse 13. To 15. I'm going to leave you today just with all these verses. You know what? Listen to this message again. Make sure you've got the verses. I hope I've given them all 100% correct. Um, I'm hoping that what I see when I, when I study these verses, sometimes, you know what, it might be worth your while to have a couple of different translations. And have your e-sword as well. Have it ready. Take the time, buy out the time, O army of God, end time disciples, last day witnesses, small remnant of the seed of the woman that keeps the law and the testimony of Messiah, that is persecuted by this world and will be going through Jacob's trouble soon. Let us understand who our captain is. And I, and I really hope that, that he will speak to you through all these 
two, three, four, five, six. How many witnesses? Both old, five, six. How many witnesses? Both old and New Testament. May you be blessed. May you find yourself with your shoes off your feet in front of this captain, understanding how he is connecting you to heaven. How he is restoring you back to God. How he is going to help us fulfill our destiny so that God's covenants can all be fulfilled. And we can be restored back as one family. Let's come home to our Father. But the only way home is by submitting to his will. And his will is personified in his word. And his word became flesh and came to teach us Father's will. I just want to end session 28 with reading from Francine Rivers' book again. Rahab rose first in the morning. Was any movement in the Israelite camp? She stepped over her brother and Besamath and around Vibe and Hagri who were sleeping on the floor. The stars were still shining. Only the hint of dawn was coming. Startled, she saw an old man of great stature bearing, standing with an arrow distance of the city wall. He was staring up at the wall. Who was this man, dressed for battle all alone, so seemingly without fear of the danger in which he had put himself? Was he studying the walls to find some weakness? He had the bearing of a leader. He was probably the leader of uh, Israel. He's a man diligent and responsible. Was he contemplating the defenses of the enemy? Surely, if this was the Israelite commander, he should have had soldiers with him to act as his bodyguards. How can he come to the city walls like this so early in the morning? Lifting her head, Rayab looked for others who might be keeping watch over this man. But everything was quiet in the Israelite camp. He was all alone. When she looked at the man again, there was another man. I, I can just imagine. Can you? Can you imagine? Can you transport yourself back in time and imagine this happening? This thing that happened in front of Jericho. When she looked up at the man again, another was with him. A soldier. And his sword was drawn. Where had he come from all suddenly? Surely she would have seen him when he was approaching. The old man went to the soldier quickly, his manner both challenging and eager. He was close enough to the walls of Jericho that she could see his lips move. Rayab's heart bounded walls of Jericho that she could see his lips move. Rayab's heart bounded as the old warrior... Oh fell to his knees and then prostrated himself before the soldier. Then he rose just enough to remove his shoes off his feet. Rayab's skin prickled strangely. Who was this man standing before the old soldier? Why would the older man bow down to the younger her brother groaned behind her and rolled over, and it made her look around. She glanced back, and she said, Brother, come quickly. Come and see this. Come see what's happening outside the walls. When she turned back, the soldier was gone, and the old man was walking back, his head high, his shoulders back, strong and confident. Who was this man that he met? She felt a shiver run through her body. Rayab leaned out the window as far as she could. The soldier was nowhere to be seen. She felt a strange excitement rush through her blood. The day has come, my brother. 